All right, good morning, everyone, and welcome to the latest and last 2019 episode of How I Met Your Mortgage. Uh, as always, I'm Adam Smith with Just the Tips Coaching, and with us, as always, is our marketing director, Jen Weibower. Good morning, Jen. And I, uh, I have a really unique honor of introducing our guest this week. Um, and I'll just fill our audience in on some of the finer points so that it doesn't seem like our show is completely off the rails this week. But uh, Pai Conchar with Madison and Company is our uh, guest this week. And since this will seem uh, different than a lot of other episodes, um, I want you guys to know that uh, Pi and I are good friends. We have been for a number of years. We're essentially neighbors. We uh, literally office in the same parking lot. Um, gosh, I don't know. We've uh, been to all kinds of different sporting events together. So Pi and I get to spend some time together. And I know that that's not normally the case with a lot of our guests. So uh, when we're telling inside jokes and that kind of thing, I don't want you guys to think that Pi and I are as odd as we really are. But Welcome to the show, Pi. Great to have you with us. Thank you, Adam. It's good to be with you. Um, you didn't save the best for last, did you? It's not one of those things, right? Because I'm not. I'm like number 14. I'm not the best. Uh, Jen, where are we here? This is episode 40-something. Oh, and I didn't change the graphics on our uh, broadcast, so I'll try to remember to do that now because I'm a dork. Um, that'll give people a little more insight. So this is actually episode 46, and Pi, what did you say you were number 14? Yeah, last, last I checked the like the top realtors in the world list, I was 14. 14 in the world. Wow, that is like that. Yeah. <laughs> that is really impressive and how very humble of you. <laughs> 14 out of in the world. That's that's wow. a lot. Um, <laughs> All right. Um, so we've got a number of people already watching. Uh, Jen, Kim, Jim, Patrick, good morning to all of you. Uh, and obviously the people joining in are just uh, piling in here. Patrick, good morning. So Pat, let's get right to it, man. Um, tell us about your history in the business. When did you start? Why did you start? What were you doing before you started? What in the world made you think that real estate was a career path for you? A viable option. <laughs> um, all very good questions. I should have wrote those down. There were like six questions there, right? All right. When did you get started in real estate, brother? 2003. 2003. That's a long haul coming up on 17 years here. Yeah. So today and tomorrow we'll finish my 17th year. Wow. Um, I was in, um, staff leasing before this, like we did payroll and workers comp and benefits administration for small companies. We we're an offsite human resource department. It was fun. I did outside sales. I was meeting with entrepreneurs all around the city and entrepreneurs are my kind of people. All, all around this city, around Denver? Uh, yep. Yeah, okay. Right yeah. So that gave me a good start to real estate. I had a good database of people that were business owners, homeowners. And um, so I started off like with a hundred people in my database, um, and it's all about the database. Realtors will tell you, um, if you don't have people that you're associated with, you're not just going to walk into a company and they're going to give you business. That doesn't happen, right? Um, well, and who, uh, for all of you, and certainly Pi knows this after 17 years and having a previous sales career prior to real estate sales, if you don't have a contact database, uh, a robust contact database, who are you marketing to? Who are you emailing? Who are you snail mailing? And we'll get into some of the things that I know that you do that are unique to your lead gen and client retention activities. But yeah, absolutely. Priority number one is to have a contact database. Yep. Um, right off the bat, I was introduced to the guru from Ireland, Brian Buffini. Um, I did some of his stuff with the personal notes and uh, keeping in touch with items of value and doing Popeyes and we'll talk about those. Um, that, that kind of stuff to build and to uh, keep stay in contact with my database, uh, all that stuff has been integral to my business. But 
why I started it, it's funny because a friend of mine said, Ty, you should get into real estate. You can sell, you can talk. <laughs> um, uh, I do like architecture. Like my wife and I will travel and we'll just walk down the streets looking at stuff and we'll spend hours looking at houses, buildings, um, architecture fascinates me. I, I, I know it does. We've had that conversation. For a little while, I studied landscape architecture in college. I think one semester. <laughs> but um, that interests me too, just how well, landscapes are put together. And so there was that background, a construction background, that made me think, okay, yeah, I could probably do real estate. Um, now, looking back, I'm glad I did, um, of course. It's been a great career and I've had a lot of fun with it and it's a great opportunity to serve people in unique ways, which is really what I love about it. Um, but I would say to anybody looking into it, man, you gotta have a stomach for it. Like to not know where your next paycheck's coming from and you might go months without a paycheck, it's stressful. I mean, that's why I wear, wear the hair that I do because if I had normal hair and it's all falling out all the time, that wouldn't be pretty. So I just shaved it and call it good, and uh, I don't lose hair over stress, per se. Okay, uh, I guess that's fair. Um, and yeah, I can't remember uh, where it was originally said, but yeah, in essence, a real estate agent wakes up unemployed every day. Yeah, I go on listing appointments, I call them job interviews. Yeah, right. And people in the office are like, what? What? What are you doing? You leave the real estate? No, dummy. I'm going on a listing of what? I got a job uh, interview. I'm going to be a Walmart grader. Yeah. Um, one of my favorite mantras is success is not owned and is rented, and the rent is due every day. Every day. Absolutely. So, I work, I work my business like where did Where did you start when you got into real estate? What company were you with? Um, a teeny tiny little company that doesn't exist anymore. It was kind of a one man band. It was called. BCR Real Estate. Okay. I can't remember the name of it. Anyways, uh, a cool guy I knew started the company. Um, problem is, I was only there three or four months, um, and then I jumped into a Remax office. Okay. With a great guy named John Campbell in the tech center. Sure. And I was there five years and had a great time. I went then to uh, Jim Wan's ex group, the Masters. Yeah. Uh, was there for three years. Then I jumped to another company, a small firm on the west side of Highlands Ranch that did mostly commercial, and that was called BRC Real Estate, which was weird because I just rearranged those letters of the first company I was with. I didn't. Okay. I, um, I was there for three years, and now I've been with Madison for six, almost six, and a uh, great fit here in Madison. And we, we certainly like the work that Madison does. And um, it's the founder, who's obviously not active anymore, Todd Narlinger, and I grew up together. Our dads were friends. His dad was, in fact, his dad was an agent at Masters, I believe. Yes, he was. Yeah. They, they left. Todd and Howard left right when I came in. So we were two ships passing in the night. Wow. But I heard of Howard and, and Todd, and uh, I mean, they were a great team at Masters. So as soon as I came there, I heard about those guys. Small world. Yeah. Really cool. Okay, so thinking back to 17 years ago now, if we can go back that far, we'll have to get in the Wayback Machine. Um, outside of having this, you know, 100 some odd person contact database, what were you doing with it? What did lead generation look like for you when you first started out? I did a lot of uh, open houses. Okay. Like every Saturday. Common activity. Trying to build my database. And you know that works somewhat, but I found as I got a bigger and better database that that wasn't the most effective way of getting business for me. I mean, I know some people love open houses. They work them like crazy. I've got a friend on Hammond's Ranch. He holds other people's houses open on Wednesdays and Fridays and all the time. I mean, it's cool when it works for him. Um, for me, after I build it up with the open house thing, I really focused on what's the highest and best use of my time, being in front of the people who already know me and trust me and like me. True story. And so I'd be out on a Saturday doing Popeyes. 
Ah, and it, we're going to get there because I know about you and your Popeye activity, no question. Um, again, for those of you watching, um, try to remember that uh, Pi and I are uh, friends. We've known each other for a good number of years, so uh, hang in there as some of this is going to seem uh, insider information, as it were. Um, and Pi, you're absolutely right. Um, open houses are a great activity for adding to your contact database. No matter whether or not that is something that you are able to turn into good lead gen activity that uh, like your uh, friend who does them on a religious regular basis, he's obviously doing them differently than a lot of people do, differently than you did. Um, but without equivocation, whether you're new, whether you're at where Pi is at 17 years, whether you're Pi's buddy who does them religiously, there's no question that at least at a minimum Open house activity is a great way to build up your contact database, your audience, and flashback to when we started the show, this is who you're going to market to, who you're going to call, who you're going to email, who you're going to mail, who you're going to pop by. Tell us about pop bys, Pi. All right. It, uh, I pop by someone's house or their office with a little gift. And the gift part is not important. Usually it's accompanied with a little note with a dad joke or some kind of bad pun on it. Because that's just me. Dude, you are the king. I, I, <laughs> if, if we want to get your wife on the phone, she will confirm. You are the king of puns and dad jokes. My brother Nick would argue. He'd say he was the king and I'm the prince. Oh. Nonetheless. Okay. He's probably not watching. <laughs> not yet. Uh, you can call me the king and I've got one. All right. Um, anyways, it's just to get in front of them, to have a conversation, to get in the flow of their lives, to know what's going on. To establish friendship, I mean, I just finished about 200 Popeyes in the last few weeks of delivering wrapping paper. Oh, and that's right. That. And a little note, I deliver and you're on my nice list. Okay. Sometimes it says, uh, wrapping up another great year, thank you for being on my nice list. Sometimes. Okay. But but hang on, because this is important stuff. There is something really smart, really sharp that is unique to your pop by activity. And I know a lot of agents do pop by activity, not as many as probably should, but I guess that's true of every lead gen and client retention activity. Uh, none of you are doing as much of it as you should. Constant, consistent, these are the keys to whatever these activities for each of you individually is. But you really put some hard, thought, seasonal type of thought into these things, the Christmas wrapping paper, the Thanksgiving pies, the Halloween candy. I mean, you really put some foresight into what the actual prize, I don't know if I want to call it a prize, or um, what the actual tangible good is that you're using in your pot buy, which really is just an opportunity for you to further relationships with these people. But um, you give that a lot of thought. And I don't know that that is something that really goes on, even with the agents that do a lot of pop by work. Hmm. Um, that's a missed opportunity. I mean, I wouldn't deliver a wrapping paper for Christmas in June, maybe July. David Letterman used to do a Christmas in July thing. But, um, peeps work, <laughs> they've got peeps for everything. It used to be just peeps were around Easter. Now you can get peeps for every holiday, so that's yeah, true. an easy standby. But um, yeah, it's got to be. I mean, it's got for me. It's got to be contextual. It's got it's got to be seasonal. It's it's got to make sense for when I'm doing it. Um, well, tell us why and how that started. Why I it just makes sense to me. I don't I. I I don't know a better answer than that. Like, okay. I, I want to be current. I want to be seasonal. I want to be... Uh, Relevant. Thank you. Um, and so I will do things around holidays. And that's another good excuse. I mean, it, just to pop by to pop by. When I started, I would pop by with a little bag of microwave popcorn. There was no season. It was just like, I want to pop by and say hello. Ha ha. Ha ha. And like, we right? see what you did there. We get the popcorn pun. Pop. Right. Corn, pop, bye. Yeah, we're on it. So that was my start. And from there, it, it generated into, let's get a little more seasonal. Let's put a little more thought into it than just doing a bag of 
microwave popcorn. Okay, fair enough. And how many, how many pop buys, individual pop buys, do you think you're doing over the course of a year these days? I would say between four and five hundred. That that's yeah. impressive. Um, I mean, it's, it's my job. I mean, it's what I do, and I love it. It is, but it is the best. If I'm feeling down, like I get burned by a client, whatever, you can't win them all. Um, if I'm feeling blue, I'll I'll get a pop by together and I'll go visit my favorite people, and they always have nice things to say. They're happy to see me, and it just it lifts my mood. It lifts my spirits. I I, I feel so much better after I do some pop buys to my favorites. So. It's it's therapeutic. <laughs> it's smart business. It's staying in the flow of people's lives. It's being at the top of their mind. I mean, honestly, Adam, two weeks ago, three weeks ago, I did a pop by at a friend's house. The last one of the day, I was coming from Sedalia. I drove up Santa Fe to the far corner of Highlands Ranch, and it was like 5:15, 5:30, so it was darkish. Knocked on their door. They greeted me happily. They were happy to see me. We stood in the foyer and chatted for 15 minutes. The next morning, I got an email from him. Hi, I've got a referral for you. This guy's working with our company. He's coming from Toronto. That guy called me like an hour later. We connected. He flew in that next Sunday. We met Monday. Got, a, got an offer on Monday of a house in Monument under contract on Tuesday morning. We're closing in two weeks. Oh, so being constant and consistent, committed to doing the lead gen and client retention relationship building activity that you do pays dividends in getting referrals, more closings, more contracts, more money, more bigger, more snowballs, more circle. I really hope our audience is picking up on this because this is the heart of what we preach here. Yes. Yes, to all the above. Yeah. It works. Yeah, it does. Absolutely. And don't get me wrong, um, for those of you watching now or in syndication, um, I'm not suggesting that you all start thinking about what great items you can load up the trunk of your car with and immediately start driving around town doing pop buys. This isn't an activity for everybody. Neither are open houses. Neither is door knocking. Whatever the case may be. But what you are doing, what does fit into your lead gen client retention, relationship building activities, you've got to be constant and consistent about it. And if that means standing in someone's foyer at 5.30 at night when it's dark out and it's winter and you've just driven all the way across the south metro part of town in order to complete what you set out to do, then do it. It obviously works. Yeah. So, yeah, that's basically all that I want to get across mm -hmm. there. Yeah, I mean, the success stories like that, isn't, that's not always, like, always what happens. Like, invariably, I'll go and I'll knock on the door, like, who are you? Who are you? Oh, um, we're the new owners of this property. Oh, the owners didn't call me to tell me they were moving. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. I'll bet that happens, sure. Bigger bounce fee. <laughs> <laughs> so that sucks, but you take the good with the bad, and... You, you do your thing and good things happen, right? Yeah, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with meeting new people either. This, I mean, that, that, that's how you that's picked up this funny. guy that came from Toronto. He's n new to you. You guys didn't know each other. And now look, you got a deal closing in a couple of weeks. I'll bet you know him really well. Yeah, we had good fun for two days. <laughs> and communicating since then, being under contract and having my contractors down there doing things while he's in Toronto. Um, he knows he can trust me, he can trust my people. It's been a great, a, a great transaction so yeah, far. It's fantastic. This is exactly the kind of thing that, well, everybody needs to hear and be doing. And I'm really hoping that some of this is uh, driving a point home with our audience. All right, so tell us about 2020, Pi. What are, what are you gonna do differently? What does the horizon look like? And maybe not just 20, 21, 22. What kinds of different things are you gonna try? What are you gonna experiment with? I know you've got some new pop by ideas formulating. Tell us what kind of activities you're gonna do in the next few years. Oh, well. I'm going to do more events. I really, really like to party with my people. Party with I, my people. 
I do uh, I do a movie event. I did one for Toy Story Four uh, back in June. I remember. That was really fun. Um, I want to do more of that. I want to be I, I, I want to be able to get my people together more in like a community. I don't know, pie tribe kind of thing, but more, more parties, more more things like that. I've got one coming up at the end of January. It's my annual thank you party, but that's a very specific. That's everybody I did business with in 2019 or the early business that closed in 2019. So it's a catered, just a casual dinner party and it's fun. Uh, hang on, because that's a big deal. And we do something like that where we suggest to all of our coaching clients and uh, all of the people that we reach out to with content from Just the Tips. This is an important piece and I don't want Pi to just gloss over this like it isn't a big deal for you guys. Thank everyone that did business with you and referred business to you over the course of the year. Do it today. This is an enormous technique. Call them, text them, email them. You're not gonna have time to schedule something like Pi is doing today, tomorrow, uh, only two days left. But really, this is an important thing every year. Make sure that the people you appreciate, the ones who do business with you and refer business to you, know that you appreciate it. This is really a big deal. If you guys want to get to a point where you're living in a strict repeat and referral business model, and I highly recommend it, if you can, you know, cut realtor.com leads and Zillow and whatever else out of your life where your your dollar spend is through the roof. If you're not on a grocery cart, great. Get rid of your bus bench, whatever. Then you really need to take the time to make sure that people know this about you, that you do live in a repeat and referral world and that you appreciate when they use you and refer people to you. So yeah, Pi, I know that this is you know, redundant activity for you, especially after 17 years of doing real estate, but yeah, I don't want that one to get glossed over either. This is important activity for everybody watching. Sorry, I wasn't glossing on that one. Yeah, no, that's really a big deal. It's a really fun event. I mean, it's casual. My family's there too. I like when my family meets families I've talked about. Yeah. So I, I, I've come home, shared stories, sad and happy stories with my wife, and now she gets to put faces with names. Um, I've told clients about Julie and my kids and the crazy stuff they do, and now they get to meet Julie and the kids. And um, it's Did, just, did you just happy. call Julie crazy? No, the kids. All right. Go back, you go, go back to roll, okay. roll it back. Okay. Can we rewind? We'll edit that out later. Excellent. Can you verify that, Jen? Maybe, maybe not. Yeah. But that that is important to me, and I, and I love meeting their kids too. Sometimes when when I'm listing a house or when I'm a buyer agent, I don't get a lot of interaction with the kids. They're not. I'm not negotiating with them. We're not talking about likes and dislikes, what they want. Do they want a three-car garage? Do they want a big yard? It's the parents, right? So I like kids. I was a high school English teacher. I, I enjoy talking with kids and listening to the silly things they say. And so at those parties, it's like I said, it's casual. I bounce around talking to people at tables and messing around with the kids. And, and uh, it's just a good time. And I want to do more of that. So yeah, only one thank you dinner per se per year. But I can do other parties, other events around the holidays or what have you. So that's 2020 is going to be more of that. Yeah, we love it. That is fantastic activity. And again, guys, we're not suggesting that you do what Pi does. Pi is definitely one unique character. There is no uh, no doubting that. Um, and that's not... Um, hello, hello, hello. It's a good thing. There's, without equivocation, it's a good thing. Pi is unique in the way he speaks, the way he acts, his history, his career history, the way he looks, his activities, and being unique is a huge piece of the puzzle. There's no question. If you guys are middle of the road, vanilla, you're not really being you, you're probably hurting yourself more than you would be if you were worried about offending the people that may not like the real you. So certainly be real, um, but I think a piece of this puzzle is that it's constant and consistent. If Pi decides he's going to do more past client events, 
I guarantee you they are going to happen. I probably won't be invited, but whatever. Um, nonetheless, um, I, I will promise you that they will happen even without being able to physically confirm that they will happen. Pi's constancy, Pi's consistency in his activities for this kind of thing are unmatched. I don't know a lot of other agents that do the constant and consistent thing better than Pi does. And Pi, you've got up years and down years. I know we talked fairly recently, you wanted to do more deals this year than you'll end up doing this year, and it was close. Mm -hmm. um, but 2020, you'll continue to do the same organic activities. You'll add some additional things to it, like these client appreciation events. And people, it snowballs. He'll get more clients out of it. He's got this guy he's working with right now that was a referral from another client. There's a little more in Pi's snowball. That guy will come to some of these events next year. He'll refer more people. There's more snowball. So trust me, this grows organically. If you do your organic lead gen, client retention, relationship building activities constantly and consistently. All right. Amen, brother. So, yeah, I, th I think that's probably the biggest piece of the puzzle is that you just need to do these things regularly, religiously, etc. Um, you know, and thanks for not making a pie joke there, Adam. The did... biggest piece of the pie. You said puzzle, and I appreciate that. Oh, you're, you're, oh, well, I, you know, it's funny because every time I call you, I'm always self-conscious about whether or not I remember to say hello pie or hi pie because <laughs> hi pie sounds really weird to me. Um, and it, it's funny cause the only other people I do that with are my friends named Gene cause hygiene sounds, uh, awkward as well. I've got to stick yeah, to yes. hello. So hello awesome. pie. All right. So pie in the interest of entertaining some of our audience that is in that consumer base. And there is quite a bit in our consumer base. Give us the highlights oh, on sing. Like, <laughs> yeah. so, sing for us <laughs> now. Let, let's. Hear a few holiday jingles. No, no, don't say. Um, but uh, do tell our audience how they can get a hold of you. What's, what's the best way? Is it Carrier Pigeon? Is it uh, the Pony Express? Um, I'm trying to think, you know, if I were as old as Pi, how would I communicate? Seriously, hit us with your digits, your email, your social media handles, whatever works best for you. Um, on Instagram, I'm at Pi Conchar. Um, on Facebook, the Welcome Home Team. Um, my cell phone, 303-884-0919. Like there. Yeah. Um, email, PyConchar at live.com. Or live, however you want to say it. I, I like to say live. Like live with Regis and Kathy Lee. Yeah. But live, live with Adam and Jen. Yeah. Maybe maybe we'll change the format of the show next year. <laughs> um, pop by my office. Um, take me to breakfast. I'll take you to breakfast. I love going to breakfast. It's an important meal. It's, it's, important it's, meal it's the, the most important meal of the day. Except <laughs> that it usually doesn't include pie. No. Unless it's the holidays. And then it's... Perfectly acceptable. Cold, leftover apple pie for breakfast is like the best breakfast. Yeah, it's basically a health food. Oh my gosh. It's fruit, it's pastry, yeah. Purple's a fruit too, so anything purple. Anything purple, all right. What's that Simpsons quote? Oh, uh, yes. Maybe see that episode. Oh, know. maybe. Uh, it, it's hard to keep up with 30 years of a show. Right? Yeah, I mean, I don't know how many episodes that translates to, but hey, Matt Groening, slow down. Us, yeah. old, us old people are having a hard time keeping up. Yeah. Go well, right. for Matt. well, Pi, thank you for joining us. And I'm I, I'm always amazed at how quickly 30 minutes whips by. And of course, you and I could sit and talk. Um, yeah, I know. Um, and something that just occurred to me as you were speaking about, and I know we're going to run long, Jen, I'm sorry. Um, something that just occurred to me about you talking about the landscape activity. The last time you were here, one of the things you made a big case of pointing out was, oh, look, you have a water feature in your front yard. I was like, yeah, I do. That's right. <laughs> um, but yeah, you do have an astute eye for the uh, architectural pieces and certainly the architectural landscaping pieces. That's 
funny stuff. Yeah, it's, it's like being a, a grammar Nazi. I, I walk into people's homes, I've just got to zip it because I see everything. I'm <laughs> sure. Oh, look, look look at that crown molding. molding. How interesting. I see the baseboards. I see the crown molding. I see the patched hole where the picture used to hang, and I just... That is hilarious. All right. Well, Pi, thank you for joining us. And for those of you, you bet. And for those of you watching live or in syndication, um, thank you for joining us as well. If you want more information about us, about the show, about being a guest on the show, if you want a copy of my book, Just the Tips, use that text code at the bottom of your screen. Pi has that one. Text tips to 63566. Pi, I'm going to run our extra. Don't go anywhere. We'll talk in just a minute. For the rest of you, thank you so much for tuning in for another year, hard to believe, of How I Met Your Mortgage. Have a wonderful new year, and we will see you guys in 2020.